21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. The shooting where? Talk into the phone, will you? Where's the shooting? Lexington and what? And yeah, well, who shot? Who? Yeah. You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. Okay. Go back there and wait. The officers will be right over there. Yeah, that's right. I'm sending them now. Right now. 21st Precinct, transcribed. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. I had come into the station house at 3.25 in order to give myself enough time before the turnout of the platoon to change to uniform, read reports and communications, and confer with the desk officers, Lieutenant Gorman and Lieutenant Snyder, who were coming on and going off duty, respectively. When I turned out the platoon, the most important instructions I gave the men concerned a series of armed robberies of liquor stores which had plagued detectives and the patrol force of every precinct on the east side of Manhattan, uptown from 34th Street, during the last three weeks. The two armed men had hardly missed a night. Sometimes they hit twice or three times in the same night. The victim was always a package store. The time was always between 7 and 10 p.m. The score was 19 robberies and $3,300. It didn't look like they were ready to quit. Of the 19 robberies, six were in the 21st Precinct, and Lieutenant King, the commander of the 21st Detective Squad, hadn't been home in a week. Neither had most of his men. After the 62 men who would patrol the precinct until midnight marched out the front door of the station house to take over their posts, I returned to my office, closed the door, and walked over to my desk to more thoroughly read the reports waiting for my signature. 21st Precinct, Captain Kennelly. Sergeant Waters on TS, Captain. Yes, Sergeant. Lieutenant King is down at the desk. He wants to know if he can see you a minute. Yes, yeah, sure. Tell him to come in. Yes, sir. Okay, Lieutenant. Go on in. Uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Have a car come by the house for me at 435. I want to go out on patrol. Yes, sir. Come in. No, come in, Matt. Hello, Captain. I saw the door closed. I thought you might have someone in here. Sit down, Matt. Yes. No, I... Uh... I've been keeping it closed when I'm in here. Some psycho has been wandering into the station house and heading right for my office before anyone could stop him. He's got some story about the flying saucers being after him. Oh, him? We had him up in the squad, too. Well, how are you doing on those liquor store robberies, Matt? Get any line on them? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about, Captain. Yeah? The borough chief called all the squad commanders concerned to a meeting this afternoon. What do you have to say? We well, had plenty to say for a half hour straight. Nineteen armed robberies, he said. Same two guys. Always in liquor stores, always between 7 and 10 p.m. Nobody's been able to get a line on them, he said. Nobody's been able to get the first base. Well, he can't say you haven't been working. No, sir, he can't say that. We've been running down every angle we get. We've been planting a few stores he, we thought they might hit. They've been doing the same thing in the other squads. What did the chief say? Nineteen robberies and no shooting yet. He said to stretch it to the 20th it would be going too far. Said if we don't get them right now, they're going to kill some victim. Yeah, well, I don't think he's far wrong about that. Well, sir, neither do I. I've been worrying about it all along. Well, what are you going to do? We're going to put almost a 100% plant on package stores between 34th Street and 96th Street. Plant all of them? Well, there's a couple of hundred. Well, we're narrowing it down some. In the first place, these guys haven't hit a store where there's been more than one clerk. Always only one clerk on the job. Well, that takes it down a lot. Yes, sir. And out of the 19 jobs, only two of them were on cross streets. The rest were on avenues. Why do you figure that is? I don't know. Must be something in their mind, I guess. That takes it down some more, eliminating all the stores on the cross streets. Yeah? And they haven't yet hit a store that's been on a corner. 
Oh, haven't they? No, sir. Every one of the 19 has been in the middle of the block, or at least away from the corner. Well, I guess they figure there's more chance for someone to see inside the store if it's on a corner. Yes, sir, that might be it. So we've got it down to within reason. Well, are you going to plant two men in each? Yes, sir. There's been two stick-up men in every case, both of them armed. We'll need two to handle them. That'll take a lot of men. Well, uh, everybody from the five squads is working. Yeah? The chief is putting half the men from the Manhattan East Homicide Squad and half the men from the youth squad on the job, and the uh, chief of detectives is sending as many men as he can spare. No, five here, six there, ten there. Yeah? The central office bureaus are giving us about 12 men. We've got a couple each from the safe and loft and narcotics squad. Uh Uh-huh. The chief got hold of every division commander in Manhattan East, and they're giving us about 20 plainclothesmen. And, uh, we're asking the precincts concerned to furnish four or preferably six patrolmen to work in plain clothes. You caught me on a night when I'm kind of short, Matt. Well, I won't ask you for six, Captain, how about four? All right, I'll, I'll get you four men. Each of them will be assigned on a plant with an experienced detective. Yeah, that's the way it should be. When does this go into effect? Tonight, we've got the surveys made. We know the stores we're going to plant. It's all set for tonight. And uh, how long do you expect it to continue? I don't know, Captain. Depends on when we get them. Immediately after conferring with Lieutenant King, I went out into the muster room and around behind the desk to apprise Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer, of the situation. After considerable discussion, we determined the names of four patrolmen to be assigned to work with the detectives on this case. They were called in off their posts, told to change to civilian clothes, and report to Lieutenant King forthwith. Within an hour, Lieutenant King furnished to Lieutenant Gorman a complete list of 31 package stores in the precinct that would be planted in the hope of catching the stick-up men in the act of committing robbery. As patrolmen on post rang in at their stated times, they were informed by the desk officer of the stores on their posts in which detectives would be on duty. Patrolman Fallon, the 124 man, typed up complete lists for the men in sector cars and the sergeants. At 6.45 p.m., Detective William Novak of the 21st Squad and Patrolman Paul Vaccaro, who had been assigned to work with him in plain clothes, were on Lexington Avenue walking toward the Fairbridge Liquor Store, which they were under instructions to plant. Uh, plant's the worst deal in a book. Yeah, it's better than walking post. Yeah, well, you told me that three hours from now, and you're a liar. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Let me talk to the guy, have a cow? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Go ahead. Uh-huh. What do you say? What, what did you have in mind? We've got a special in rum. Uh, we're detectives. Oh. My name's Novak. This is Vaccaro. Hi. How are you? Healers. Jack Healers. Glad to know you. You know, for a minute I was worried when you came in. I've been hearing all this about watch out for two men together, those hold-ups, you know. Yeah. Well, that's what we're here to see you about. What do you mean? Are you the boss? You own the place? No, I'm not the boss. I'm just a clerk. The boss went home. He works days. I work nights. Yeah, well, we want to stick around here a while tonight. What do you mean, stick around? Why? Well, I'll tell you, Jack, it's not that we're expecting anything... But just in case these guys do walk in, we want to give you some protection. Okay? Listen, you're sure? Sure about what? That you don't expect them here. We don't expect them here any more than we do any place else. We're covering a lot of places tonight. Oh. Hey, listen, what's this here? A special on champagne? Yeah, special this week. It's pretty cheap for French champagne. Lay off. That's a lousy year. That's why it's cheap. The connoisseurs won't touch it. Oh. This neighborhood is lousy with connoisseurs. I wondered why it was so cheap. Eh... These guys have held up a lot of package stores, huh? Nineteen. I've been working here eight years. Nobody has ever stuck me up yet, knock on wood. Well, you can never tell when your number's up. So what we'd like to do is stay back there in the stock room while you just go about your business, okay? It's all right with me. Let's take a look back there. Yeah, sure. It's not much. Go ahead. After you. Thanks. I'll get the light. Not much back here. You said it. But if this is where you want to stay, I guess up to you. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we'll move a couple of these cases around so we can sit on them. All right? Yeah. Wait a minute. I'll give you a hand there. Get that one over there, Carol. Okay. Make it a little more comfortable. Yeah. Where do you want it? 
Yeah, right here. Ah, let's see how this is going to be. Shut that door about halfway, Vicar. Okay. Now turn out the light, huh? All right. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be all right. We can sit back here and see everything that goes on out in the store with a bird's eye view. You want the light on now? Yeah, for a minute. That's uh, generally where you stand? At the counter, isn't it? That's where all the customers come in to you? Yeah, that's right, right there. Good. And where, where can we put our coats? I don't think I've got any more hangers back there. Oh, never mind. We'll just throw them over the cases. All right, if you want to. Okay, but Kyle, take your coat off. Yeah, okay. Now, before we get settled down, let's go out in front again a minute. All right. You don't think they'll come, but just in case they do, what happens? Well, that's what I was going to tell you. Now, one of these guys always comes up to the counter. The other one stands near the door. Yeah. We can see both the counter and the door from back there, so we can see both of them. Here comes the customer. Okay. Good evening, madam. Good evening. I'd like a fifth of scotch, please. Do you have any particular kind in mind? Well, I... This is very nice. Selkirk and Peebles. Selkirk and Peebles? A very fine brand of scotch whiskey. Well, I'll, I'll have to admit I never heard of it. Hey, look, look at that label. Selkirk and Peebles, established in 1778. Must be good if they stayed in business that long. Must be. But don't you think I ought Lady, to... Lady, I'll, I'll, I'll sell you anything you want, but you take my word for it. You take this Selkirk and Peebles and you'll be back for more. Let me put it to this gentleman here. Now, what do you think of S&P? I'll tell you the truth, I'm not a scotch drinker. I don't know one scotch from the other. <laughs> well, my husband is, and he does. Then you take this bottle of Selkirk and Peebles home to your husband. And if he's not satisfied with it, I'll miss my guess. Well... You'll be back for more. All right. What did you say, two-fifths? One. Just one, please. Here you are. Out of ten dollars... Yeah, 60, 75, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 1 is 10. Thank you very much. Call again, ma'am. Good night. And you'll be back for more. I hope so. <laughs> sell Kirk and Peebles, huh? The boss says push it, so I push it. The salesman sold him, so I got to sell the customers. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's as good as any of them. Never even heard of it. I got news for you. Neither did I. Well, let's get set here. Now I'll tell you. And you just go about your business the way you would normally. Now forget we're even back there. All right. We'll see everything that goes on out here. And if these two guys come in, don't try to signal us. Don't try to attract our attention. Don't look to the back. Just do what they tell you. Get your hands up in the air, open the cash register, do whatever they tell you. All right. And when we yell at them, they won't pay any more attention to you. They turn around toward us. You hit the floor and stay there. All right? Okay. <laughs> now you got me a little shaky. Now don't be shaky, Jack. Let me ask you a question. If they come in here, are you better off alone, or are you better off with us in back? You sold me. Come on, Vicar. Right with you. Just a normal operation, okay? Okay. Get the light, Vicar. All right. Now, settle down. You've got a long wait. Yeah. <clears throat> Think we ought to smoke back here? I don't see why not. Just keep it covered. Novak. All right, I see them. Sit tight. Two of them. And they fit. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. What do you got in a bundle of rye? Ah, uh, here. Here's a real nice one. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, anything else? No, that'll be all. How much? That'll be four dollars and five cents. Easy. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you, gentlemen. All again. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, brother. Yeah. Jack, you're a real trooper. What do you mean, I'm a real trooper? Right, those two guys look right. You acted as natural as all get out. Well, why shouldn't I? They're from the shoe store around the corner. I've known them for years. All right, just keep up the good work. Hey, look, it's uh, it's not going to be like that every time the door opens up, is it? I'll tell you. That depends who opens the door. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Today's newspaper is just like yesterday's, you figure. Hardly seems worthwhile to buy one, since the authorities closed down all the newspaper plants except their own. 
government decrees, new laws, work quotas, makes pretty dull reading. And there's no sense in trying to figure out what's true and what isn't. You get their side of the news, or none at all. Can't compare it with others. There aren't any others. And people are so afraid to talk that you hardly get any news by word of mouth anymore. Well, that's the picture in some countries where the government owns or controls the press, but not in yours. You know why? It's because your government is absolutely forbidden from ever making a law to restrict freedom of speech or freedom of the press. Those freedoms were protected for you by a group of men who sat down 165 years ago and wrote out our Constitution and Bill of Rights. In the first article, they wrote, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. That's why you can buy a newspaper with an editorial page where someone writes his views on a particular subject. If his views aren't in accord with yours, well, you can write in and tell him so. And like as not, they'll print your letter the next day. And you have a freedom of choice of which newspaper you want to read, too, or which book you want to buy, or movie you want to see. It's guaranteed for you by our Bill of Rights. It is one of our freedoms. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. While Detective Novak and Patrolman Vaccaro waited on a plant in the stockroom of the liquor store on Lexington Avenue, officers were concealed in other package stores in the 15th, 19th, 21st, and 23rd precincts where the rash of armed robberies had broken out. Meanwhile, the entire patrol force in these districts, which together comprised the 6th Division, was on the alert for the stick-up men who had committed 19 robberies in three weeks. As part of this alert, I remained on patrol for a longer period than usual and was still out at 9.40 p.m., nearly three hours after Detective Novak and Patrolman Vaccaro first went on the plant. During that time, the front door to the shop had opened nearly 30 times. Each time, the officer tensed. Then they relaxed. Well, tell me, Vaccaro, what's better? Walking the post or sitting on a plant? Well, this sure isn't any pleasure. You said it isn't. Oh, Jack. Yeah? When's closing time? Ten o'clock. Good. What? I said good. One of the cigarettes? No, no, thanks. Well, look, tell me something. You, uh, you pull down this kind of a job often? I mean, sitting on a plant like this? No, not too often. Well, that's good. Stop complaining. You've only been here three hours. Wait till you've been on one for 16 hours straight. On your feet, mm -hmm. out in the cold, waiting for some guy to show up who's never coming. Then you can complain. You fellas gonna be back tomorrow night? We don't know yet. Well, you made nice company. Oh. Thank you. Oh, my aching back. Stand up a while. I tried that. Nothing helps. Hold it. Customers. Evening, gentlemen. They don't fit. Quiet. What'll it be, gentlemen? What do you got in the rye? Rye whiskey? Well, we've got those over here. Never mind that. Just put those hands on the... Take it easy. All right. Hold it now. Hold it. Now just be a good boy. We both got the difference here, and you could get your head blown off. Now take right. it easy. Come on, let's get the door. Easy, hold it a second. Wait till I kick the door open. Yeah, sure. Come on, move out of the way. All right. You set? Yeah. Looks pretty good, eh? All right, now. <laughs> Police officers! Crap! Get him! Get him up! Shoot! Duck! Watch it! Get him! Get away from me! You got him! Hold up there! Hold up! All right. All right. Now get the hands up! All right, get him up high. Drop that. The carols. Take a look at one that's down. Yeah, right. All right, now you. Kick the gun over here. Go on, kick it. All right. Yeah, I think this one's dead. It's caught one right between the eyes. Jack, you all right? Yeah. Where are you? On the floor. All right, you can get up now. Yeah, I got the other one's gun. All right, hold on to it. Okay, you. Lean up against the counter. Go on. Go okay, on, lean up. Uh, all right, take it easy. See what's on it, Carol. Yeah. Take it easy. Shut up. Boy, what a mess. You better get over there out of the way, Jack. Oh. Ah. Uh, over here, all right? That's fine. Yeah. Money's in his top coat pocket. Yeah, I got it. All right, hold on to it. Hey, here's a cop on the beat. Uh, what's going on there? What do you got? Uh, the liquor store bandits. We're okay. Post yourself out front. Keep the people out. Okay. All right. Let's get the cuffs on them. All right, put your hands behind you. How am I going to lean? Lean with your head. Get your hands behind you. Oh! Okay. 
All right, he's set. All right, mister, straighten up. Listen, what do you want from me? I want plenty from you. Sit down on the floor there. Go ahead, sit down. All right. Keep your eye on him. I'll ring in. Yeah, all right. Going to use the phone, Jack. Help yourself. Boy, that was close. Pretty close. So it was. Hello, CB. Detective Novak, 21st Squad. Send an ambulance to 3302 Lexington Avenue. Yeah, 3302. We were sitting on a plane at a liquor store. Two men attempted to commit an armed robbery. One shot, we're holding the other. No, no, I think he's dead. Yeah, all right. Will you connect me with 21st? Yeah, thanks. How many shots were fired around here anyway? I didn't have time to count them, Jack. Hello, Sergeant, Detective Novak. We're on a plant at 3302 Lexington. Yeah, Vaccaro and I. Yeah, that's right. They came in. Uh, one dead, I think. We got the other one. All right, good. Will you ring upstairs? Okay, thanks, Sergeant. That was good work. That was good work. Thanks, Jack. I knew you were back there. I knew everything was going to be all right. <sighs> but I was still scared to death. No, I don't blame you. I know how you feel. All right, where do you live? What's this slob got to say for himself? Uh, nothing yet. Just that his name is Earl Creedy. Earl Creedy, huh? Where do you live? Downtown, in the village. Well, you've been living up here on the east side lately, haven't you? What do you mean? 19 stick-ups in three weeks, that's what I mean. You're out of your mind. Don't tell me I'm out of my mind. All right, what's your friend's name? Navin. Richie Navin. Where does he live? In the village, too. How old are you? 24. How old is he? Oh, no. Same age, I guess. I never asked him. You been in trouble before? Yeah, I've been in trouble before. How many times you arrested? I don't know, four, five, six, something like that. You ever do any big time? Yeah, I did some big time. What for? Grain larceny. How much did you do? 27 months. I got news for you, mister. You're going to do some more. Yeah. Guess I am. Well, listen. Is he dead? Yeah, it looks that way. It's too bad he was a nice guy. Yeah. A sweetheart. Listen. Mr. Novak, I better call my boss, don't you think? Now, wait a while. I like to keep this phone open. Well, he's entitled to know. Well, it won't hurt him if he knows five minutes later. He got some of the money out of the cash register. One put it in his pocket. No, no, no. We got it. Started stuffing in his pocket. I don't even know how much was in there altogether until I total it up. I got to let my boss know how much, how, how much it was. Well, whatever it is, you'll get it back. It wasn't much. It was enough. You better go stand over there, Jack. Brother, what a mess around here. Who is it there, Carol? Yes, Sergeant Vaccaro and Novak. Well, looks like you hit the jackpot. Yeah, I guess we did, Sergeant. This is a lucky one, huh? Yeah, lucky. I'm the luckiest man in the world. You sure are. You sure the other one's dead? Yeah, you got one right between the eyes. Well, 20 was your magic number, huh, mister? What do you mean, 20? You guys sure get dumb in a hurry, don't you? What happened? Well, we got on a plant here at 645. We sat in back there. These two guys walked in about 9.30. We didn't think too much of them at first. No, sir, we didn't. They're not very close to the description. What description? You just sit there and keep your mouth shut. But we kept our eyes on them anyway. They asked for a bottle of rye and they walked over to the counter. And that one there stayed by the door and this one talked to the clerk. This one pulled a gun out and started threatening around. We got set and came out after them. We told them we were cops. They turned on us. This is how it wound up. I don't see how it could have wound up any other way. You guys just pressed your luck too much. Did the call come over ambulance responding, Sergeant? Yeah, Vaccaro, there's an ambulance on the way. Well, let's go over and take a look at the other one. Well, what does he mean, press my luck? Yeah, I think he's had it. Who's a good marksman? You or Novak? Well, to tell you the truth, Sergeant, I don't know. I was shooting at both of them, first one and the other. How many shots you fired? Well, I, uh... I think I got a four. I don't know. Let me take a look. Never mind. Sit still. Yeah, four. What's this one's name, you know? Well, the other one says this one is Richie Navin. Poor Richie, huh? Yeah. Poor Richie. Well, he looked for it. And he got it. Well, let's talk to the clerk. That's the truth. It's the honest-to-goodness truth. You wouldn't know the truth if it had a neon sign on it. Hello, Jack. Oh, hi, Sergeant. Well, you hit the jackpot tonight. I guess I did. And I want to quit while I'm ahead. Well, there's a captain. Hello, Captain. Good work, Vaccaro. Thanks, Captain. Well, this ends a lot of trouble for us. Yes, I know. I gave you a rough time, huh? 
Well, we weren't sure at first that it was them. They weren't too close to the descriptions we had. I know it was them. I was looking at their guns. Well, I want to see what that one has to say for himself. Don't forget you fellas have your top coats in back there. Don't worry, we won't. <laughs> Hello, Novak. Captain, this is the sorriest thief you ever met. He gets hooked hot on the job, his partner gets killed, and he's still got nerve enough to insist that this is the first deal he's been in on. What's your name? How many times do I have to say it? Now, look, mister, you better get straightened out and get straightened out fast. Now, tell the captain your name. It's Creedy. Earl Creedy. You and your partner have been pretty busy boys, haven't you? Just met him today. Look, what do you want from me? Sure, you just met him today. And you dreamt about those 19 other stick-ups. I don't know anything about any other 19 stick-ups. He hasn't given us a hard enough time already. He wants to make it harder. Where'd you meet him? I told you you wouldn't believe me anyway, so what's the use of telling you? Uh, you tell me and let me make up my own mind. Where'd you meet him? In a bar down in the village. What bar was that? I don't know, some, some bar on 7th Avenue. When? Today, this afternoon. And you got to be such good friends that you just decided to go out together and stick up a liquor store, huh? Well, that's not exactly the way we decided, but it'll do. Now, why don't you tell us the truth? I am telling you the truth. What have I got to hold back? Who do you think you're fooling? Not us. I'm not trying to fool anybody. You're past that stage. Hello, Captain. Hello, Matt. Good work, Novak. Thank you, Lieutenant. And this is Earl Creedy. The other one's Richard Navin. Earl doesn't believe in telling the truth. He says this is the first liquor store he ever heisted. He says he had nothing to do with those 19 others. He's right. He didn't. He didn't? Got yourself a good pair of heisters, Novak. But the ones we're looking for just hit down the 15th precinct. That's five minutes ago. No kidding. You see, I told you. Did they hit a store that was planted, Matt? No, they got away clean, Captain. Number 20. I get dropped on number one. And they hit number 20. Some luck I got. Well, you're better off than they are, Earl. You're through. They're still shopping around for what your friend got. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yeah. Yeah. How many women? What is it? A bargain sale there? What do they want? Yeah. Yeah. And so it goes. We open the store? Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. The police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct transcribed the factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King, Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters. Featured in tonight's cast were Martha Greenhouse, John Sylvester, Frank Marth, Mason Adams, and Lawson Zerby. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. George Bryan speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.